This is our audio recording of Amazon Case Analysis. Speaking today will be Jacob Staten and Luis Salinas. Other members in our group are Elizabeth Hawthorne, Jaden Pemberton, and Adriana Nunez. Adriana Nunez. The internet has enabled many businesses to expand its presence within the global marketplace. It is important to understand modern trends and factors that are currently influencing the way individuals are buying and selling goods and services. Uh, the purpose of our case analysis over Amazon is to examine their strategy and provide recommendations to the overall company performance. The key points we will focus on today are economic, socioculture, and technological factors, following a discussion over the drivers of change and key survival factors. It will then assess Porter's five forces in which determine a level of competition among Amazon and the industry. In addition, we will analyze Amazon's current strategy and performance and then get into a SWOT analysis. And finally, ending with our recommendations. Okay, we're now going to move into the uh, economic factors within that of Amazon's industry of online retailing. After looking closely to these factors, we have uh, determined the most important of those to be economic stability, disposable income, and even economic development in countries. The economic stability of a country has tremendous influence on spending habits of consumers in that country. In countries with weak economic stability, this can hinder the spending ability of their population. If the economy isn't as strong, prices will fluctuate, having a negative effect on whether consumers can spend in the industry. It is also important to note that economic development among the other countries can have influence on the industry. The growth of developing countries means more growth opportunities for companies within that industry. Companies expanding globally can significantly influence the success, so it is essential for the international economies to sustain increased development. And these are just a few of the economic factors that can influence the online retailing industry. Now we will move on to the socio-cultural factors. An increase in online buying habits are among the most influential of these factors. With consumers wanting convenience now more than ever, this trend hold significant influence on the industry in which allows a strong consumer presence in the e-commerce. With e-commerce being the fastest growing sales channel in the United States, it is important to recognize that buying online versus through brick and mortar stores enables the movement of leading socio-cultural factors among the industry. The online retail industry also provides language capabilities to those in international markets. For example, Amazon and Walmart both provide an option to their customers to translate their online sites into the preferred language, regardless of geographic location. This capability allows for a decrease of barriers in this industry. These sociocultural factors continue to influence the industry and drive change. Now I will pass it over to Jacob for the technological factors. In terms of these technological factors, The online retail industry consists of a number of factors including IT efficiency, autonomous mobile robotic systems, and electronic wallets. IT efficiency involves all aspects of the company within the industry that it provides for. For internal solutions that will in turn allow for successful business units, hardware and software, and strategy. As far as autonomous mobile robotic systems, they are becoming increasingly popular as technology advances. These systems allow for reductions in shipping time and increased productivity within the warehouses. For example, Amazon uses these systems in warehouses as a means of increasing their processes and employee tasks. Electronic wallets have also become an influential technological factor among that of the online retail industry because it allows for a convenience for consumers in terms of payment. 
all of these technological factors either make it more efficient in the warehouse or more consumer friendly. Now we will move on to the key survival factors. Adapting to changing consumer preferences is an essential aspect to surviving in the industry. The online retail industry survives off of the customer. Continually obtaining the knowledge of who their customers are, what they want, and being able to give them what they want are crucial. Constant technological innovation is also a necessary key survival factor within the industry as it serves for the foundation of successful online endeavors. Utilizing changing technology effectively and efficiently help companies within the industry better provide for their customers and ultimately becomes a survival factor. Like we said earlier, economic stability, online capabilities, and consumer preferences are drivers of change within the online retail industry. Depending on where the economy is at, people may or may not have the ability to spend, therefore providing a fluctuating driver of change. Another important driver of change is online capabilities. They play a very significant role within the industry. Consumers' ability to navigate through companies' website efficiently and effectively while also providing solutions that allow for convenience can make a difference in the success within the industry. And lastly, consumer preferences are always changing, therefore the industry must stay ahead of these trends and able to stay afloat. Yes, Moving into Porter's Five Forces, uh, rivalry is strong. However, Amazon's main competitors often do not compete with one another. For example, Ulta Beauty and O'Reilly don't compete directly with one another while they compete directly with Amazon. Switching over to supplier power, uh, supplier power is weak. Amazon has the power to choose between these different suppliers. For most products, there are multiple suppliers, especially online. Because there are so many suppliers, they cannot show power over these online businesses among the industry. Being able to sell online saves money, and with more and more consumers moving to online purchases, suppliers cannot afford to lose this connection with online retailers, which is why supplier power is weak. The threat of new entrants among the online retail industry is essentially high due to a number of reasons. Low barriers of entry, no physical infrastructure, and low initial costs makes it easy, easy to set up an online retail store. In addition, with more businesses wanting to sell their products and services online, this leads to a higher demand for online presence. While it is possible for new entrants to easily submerge themselves into the industry, it is important to keep in mind that because it is becoming so popular, it is getting harder to offer a, div a diverse spectrum of products that are not already out there. Therefore, competition is fierce, and new entrants have to keep this fact in mind. Substitutes within the industry are high due to the fact that there are many online retailers that provide the same service such as Amazon.com, Walmart.com, or even Best Buy. When searching for online products, there is almost always more than one place that you can find them on the internet. In contrast, there are also brick and mortar stores that pose as possible substitutes. Consumers who want the products immediately can turn to the physical stores as an alternative to the online sector. Ultimately, the large amount of substitutes among the online industry provide a high degree of competition. And due to the high amount of substitutes, buyer power is extremely strong. For example, buyers have many options to choose from when selecting a product. Buyers essentially have the capability to leverage the fact that there are so many companies among the industry to turn to and that can ultimately carry a strong force. In conclusion, rivalry, threat of new entrants, force of substitutes, and buyer power are all strong with the only weak of the porter's forces being supplier power. Now we will take a more in-depth look at Amazon's current strategy and performance. A quote from Amazon's website states, Our vision is to be Earth's most customer-centric company to build a place where people can come and find and discover anything that they want to buy online. This inherently drives Amazon's success and allows for the company to form a stringent direction on what needs to be fulfilled. 
Amazon's objective is for customers to find an easier, faster, and more cost-effective way to online shop. By doing so, they have adopted the current strategy of being a low-cost provider to gain a competitive advantage. They are able to provide reduced prices because they package and ship products from huge warehouses. This places them as a low-cost provider. Moving over to goals and performance targets, Amazon is focused on long-term growth rather than short-term. CEO Jeff Bezos once announced, selling at low prices may undercut profits, but they create a virtuous cycle that leads over the long term to a much longer dollar amount of free cash flow and thereby to a much more valuable Amazon.com. The strategy focusing on long term growth for Amazon allows them to focus on the economies of scale and slowly weaken their competitors. Amazon's market focus is extremely centered around their customers. The company thrives off the energy from their customers in order to continue their innovation. Amazon is good at understanding their customer needs and providing great customer service, as well as providing it in a timely manner. Amazon's focus is on the logistics of shipping and the availability of a wide variety of products. They aim to offer almost any product you can need while also shipping it to you at a cheaper rate and much faster than their competitors. Moving over to the capabilities and competencies of Amazon, their technology infrastructure allows them to carry an online process that is more efficient than their competitors. Without this advanced framework, Amazon would not have the total capability to utilize its core competencies competency of being able to encompass such a wide variety of products and services while con conveniently delivering in such a timely manner. Amazon's uh, competitive strategy is to be a low-cost provider where they constantly work to reduce prices at every level to sustain a competitive advantage. When taking a look at the financial performance of Amazon, it is currently one of the most valuable companies on the NASDAQ exchange. The company's net worth as of April 2017 was more than $430 billion. That is nearly twice the market value of their competitor Walmart at $220 billion. This year alone, Amazon has managed a growth rate of 33.5% compared to the industry average of 13.4. Amazon's net sales increased from $61 billion to $135 billion in December 2016. Low prices, a variety of products, as well as being able to shop from home or on any electronic device, has strengthened the competitive position of Amazon by encompassing a number of factors that many competitors are not able to go up against. Amazon has been able to continuously prevail within the industry, thus strengthening their competitive position. And as Amazon has evolved, so has their business strategy. Today, they function on a corporate level strategy. They seek out countries where their products and services are needed, and with the proper market research, they adhere to the specific needs of that country. Amazon makes sure to keep up with the current market and customer needs by having distribution centers located all over the country. This helps them process and fulfill customer transactions in the quickest manner. In regards to Amazon addressing market changes, they would be able to do so under their organizational structure because issues can be easily managed due to their geographic presence in foreign markets. This type of organizational structure is ideal for Amazon because it reinforces their mission to being the most customer-centric company. Amazon's strategy ultimately poses to be efficient as its low cost attracts customers and provides for a sustainable cu customer company relationship. The customer centric focus that Amazon is centered around allows for them to deliver an ultimate customer experience which fosters loyalty among the company. Their core competencies and capabilities allow them to sustain a competitive advantage by capitalizing on economies of scale and focusing on customer satisfaction. These capabilities have proven to be effective as shown in their financial performance. Now we will transition to the SWOT analysis. When taking a look at Amazon's SWOT analysis, the company is extremely logistics savvy. From the internal logistics to having distribution centers all over the country, the distribution centers 
have multiple locations making one online order from point A to point B in a more timely and efficient manner. One major strength for the company is the ability to provide low cost with fast products and services to customers. The company has even started moving into homes through Echo Voice Recognition Technology. Some of the key weaknesses to point out of Amazon is the ease of emittability, their limited presence in developing countries, and limited brick and mortar presence. With that being said, it is important for companies to recognize their weaknesses and invest in them so that they become their strengths. As for one of the opportunities for Amazon, we have foreign domestic development in countries. If they miss their window in developing countries, then it, may, it might be hard for them to get in and gain market share after other companies already established a presence. Another opportunity being to vertically integrate by cutting out the middleman. This will help to lower shipping errors and increase customer satisfaction while also cutting some cost. As for threats, uh, the biggest threat posed to Amazon is their ease of emittability. It's not hard to copy their business models, which makes it highly likely for companies such as Walmart.com or Target.com to copy what they're doing as long as they have the capital to do so. I will now hand it over to Luis for the recommendations. One of our recommendations to Amazon is for the company to implement their own delivery service. Amazon would be taking on a vertical integration approach by expanding their value chain. The company would be able to control the training drivers go through and they would be able to forecast errors and handle any problems that might arise during the shipping process more effectively. As of right now, Amazon uses the United States Post Office as well as UPS for all of their shipping needs. By having their own delivery services, Amazon could eliminate their need for middlemen. Amazon would be able to cut costs when having to pay a third party and can put the funds towards employing their own workers. These employees would be certified drivers who are also trained to handle the goods with special care during the shipping process. Amazon would gain more control over problems that might occur during the shipping process, such as lost or damaged goods. An idea for the company once they start this new delivery service would be similar to what Domino's Pizza does. Customers would be able to track their items from payment to delivery, thus reaffirming Amazon's capabilities and results to customers. This recommendation would also attract the customers who are more skeptical of ordering online due to the fear of never receiving their products. A second recommendation would be for Amazon to further their product line of easy-to-use home technology. Amazon products such as the Echo Dot, Echo, and Alexa smart speakers have done extremely well in regards to not only sales but to increasing sales across the board. Amazon smart speakers make it extremely easy to buy things online, and when given an order to purchase something, Amazon smart speakers go straight through Amazon's website. These products are designed to make it easier for consumers to purchase their items from Amazon. By furthering their product line of easy-to-use home technology, they will increase their own product line sales and create an Amazon smart home environment. The smart speakers alone are a propitious niche due to their profitable connection with Amazon's online sales. If they couple that with increasing their speakers' compatibility with other technologies in the average household, Amazon could become a necessity or a standard in people's homes. If done correctly, the additional resources spent on R&D, product manufacturing, and storage for inventory will be justified through a high level of sales due to Amazon's customer recognition of their product's value and usage.